Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, so you can see a few things have changed on the RS Buck. Since last time, I've got the files for the hood and the rear deck lid, and these have been cut up at the NDSU Innovation Studio. Uh, they're really neat because they can uh, be removed in and out of the body buck. There you can see just how that works. And really, this turned out to be a work of art in its own right. It's just beautiful how it turned out. So we've got those done. There we go. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about annealing aluminum. So I've jumped off the body panels temporarily because there's a few areas of the buck that I wanted to tidy up to make uh, the long-term goal of building multiple cars much easier. So with that said, what I'm doing now is just taking this angle aluminum and I'm annealing it. So that's bringing the hardness to H0. So it's very soft. And then I'm just forming it and installing it on the buck. This will give me a solid line to uh, mark out my door opening and also give me the ability to actually hammer the door flange or door opening right over the buck. So I'm working with half inch aluminum channel. So it's half by half and it is one eighth inch thick. And uh, this is just stock that you can get even at a local hardware store. So when I buy this, it is in an H14 state. Uh, so it's pretty rigid. So now I'm going to be annealing the material that we'll be using on the door frame itself. So the process of annealing is to get the material back to its dead soft state, which is H0. And to do this, we introduce heat. By using a magic marker and map gas, I can determine that the material has been brought back to H0. I'm using the map gas torch to burn off the marker. As soon as the marker is burned off, I can tell that the material has been brought back to a soft state or H0. Another way to do this is to use oxyacetylene by introducing a sooty film over the material and then burning it off with the oxyacetylene torch you can also determine that the panel or the material has been brought to H0. This works great for larger panels with a larger torch. What I'm doing here is pretty fine work, so the map gas torch is an excellent solution. So I've got the shape of my door opening already sort of carved out. I used some hardwood down in the corners and then just stacked plywood up around the rest of the opening. So I'm doing this flange in two pieces. It's easier to butt it together right in the middle than do it all in one piece. So what we'll do is use the linear stretching dies on my old Harbor Freight planishing hammer. What the linear stretching dies do is open up one side of this angle material and when it opens it, as I explained in an earlier video, it puts a radius in it because we're stretching or thinning the material. So I'm going to lay this out and then we'll jump over there and begin forming it to this radius. So I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of extra up at the top because as I'm forming that radius, it can kinda, of, you know, I wanna be able to have a little bit of room to move it back and forth to, to get it right into the sweet spot. So I'm just gonna run it down, mark the beginning of my radius, and make sure I know which side I wanna start stretching on. And we should be good to go with that for a starting point. So this is the Harbor Freight planishing hammer that I use primarily for stretching. The lower die that's in this right now was just ground down to have a sort of wedged top to it. Not so sharp that it'll pierce the material, but as it hammers up and down, it will spread it out, thin it out, and ultimately stretch. Now this thing can move a lot of material really quickly, so you have to check your work frequently. So 
So I just want to look at the radius of the wood and check my work against it to make sure I'm moving in the right direction. And then it's back to the planishing hammer again to get some more shape into this piece. I'll go back and forth until it fits just perfect, and then I'll go ahead and fasten it to the buck. So this area right here needs to be shrunk. As you can see, it's straight, it needs to be radius. The nice thing about annealing this material is that I don't have to use my shrinker to shrink this. It's soft enough that I can actually hammer it into itself on the butt. So since the bottom is lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and sink some screws in that just to keep it in place. All right, so I've got the bottom portion of this screwed in and my radius here is looking good. And so I'm just kind of working it around and I'll use a hammer to, to kind of keep it in place. Okay, so we've got the first half done. Um, that gives you a good idea how I can shape the angle aluminum uh, with annealing and without any major you know, shrinking tools. Now, this eighth inch material is just a little bit too thick to actually fit in my, my hand shrinking tool. Uh, thus the reason that I just slowly form it in uh, with hammer over the buck. For the second half of the project, I'm taking a slightly different approach. I'll use this paper template to match my radius to, saving trips back and forth to the buck. This should get me really close and I can do my final fitment right on the buck. All right, we've shaped up the other side. Let's see how it fits. It's looking promising. We're gonna go ahead and start installing it. And I can see a little discrepancy in the forming that I did on this piece here. So I'm gonna take a chisel and just knock this out of here. There we go. So what that was doing when that wood was in there, it actually was lifting this up and throwing the, uh, throwing the, the symmetry off here. So now we're sitting very nice. So we'll go ahead and start clamping like we did the other one. So I'm just going to use the same process that I did on the first half with this one, locking it down with the clamps, drilling the holes, setting screws in, and then shaping the upper radius to the buck. And now I have a really nice, consistent and solid form to shape to. Like I said in the beginning, this will allow me to actually hammer the flanges right over the buck. So that wraps up this part of the series on annealing aluminum and making these door flanges on the RS buck. As always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, share the videos, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.